Right, we're on our way. Where are we going? On the Neen Valley Railway. Yeah. From the Ferry Meadow Station. Yeah, so it should be good. Yeah. I'm filming this on the Sony, so if it looks a bit bouncy, <laughs> That's why. I'm not so stabilised. Yeah, just hope it, it works, just doesn't it? I hope it looks, doesn't look too bad. So I've just got to hold it way out in there. <laughs> A little tea room, Overton tea room, ten till four. Oh, I could have, could have tea. We're a little bit early. They've got like a little uh, play area over there now. I notice that's good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that's the only plants I could ever grow. The uh, cactus. cactus. <laughs> Interesting looking carriages. I notice further down look like oh, old intercity, are they? Do you think? Oh, there's the one with the, like, the green at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it's like that. There's an intercity sleeper back up there. Yeah, it pops. Sort of here somewhere, aren't we? Out there. But you've just come over the river, so we're about there. Yeah. <laughs> Get that way now. <laughs> river down there. There's the old A1, isn't it? There. What, here? Yeah, and the crossing that was on it. It's about this station building, isn't it? Yeah. It's always not trying to raise the, money yeah, to do it out. Yeah, not owned by the railways, they're trying to save it. Yeah. It's been like that as long as we've been coming here. That's it. This is Wands, Wandsford. Yeah. Poppy's glad to be out. <laughs> Let's have a little look round. Miniature railway. Turntable. Yeah, it says it was built for the London, Midland, and Scottish Railways in the 1930s. Originally 60 foot long and would turn a locomotive up to 140 tonnes in weight. Wow. Originally installed at Bourne in Lincolnshire, moved to Peterborough East in 1958, used to turn engines and rolling stocks, especially uh, post office vehicles. What it's got on there now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, TPOs. 
It's lovely, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, very good, isn't it? Yeah, I just noticed it got a chippy. A little dog in there. Bit of a beast, isn't it? She's looking worried. <laughs> yeah, found someone that's younger than me. <laughs> Forty-nine tons. Now this is the old A1. So all the tra traffic that came along there would have to stop at that crossing. Yeah. I think it was the A1, wasn't it, till about 1965, something like that. Yeah, probably about the age of that engine. Yeah. A little miniature railway here, there's nothing running on it at the moment. It's got its own turntable, hasn't it? There. Where? Is that what that is? Where it's round? No. No, okay. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. over there. Sorry, yeah. I've just seen it. That's what it is, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little turntable. Cute, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. There's certainly more here than there used to be. Yeah, out of it for Bisto. Yeah, LNER there with the old car. And along there is an advert for the route master. It says moving London. All oh, right, a bit faded out, aren't they? Yeah, well, they're probably as old as you. Thank you. It's play area here as well. Huh. A crane over there. Study centres, loads. Keith's Railway Mania. Oh, Railway Amia. Railway Aina. What well, this is? Oh, sort of railway memorabilia. Okay. Night pups. Chatham railway pups. Bogner. You see that down there? Yeah. You still have those at the bank. Oh, right, okay. You used to put the coin in a bag and then you had to put yeah. the weight and if it was oh, right. right or okay. it wasn't right. Yeah. I presume that's that what it was for the coin weigh in, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. All right, puppy, all right. A little Pico models. Look at those. Wow. Really settle. These books. Yeah. Oops. Oops. Oh, my On the lamp. lamp. Yeah. <laughs> All the lamps here. Beast, isn't it? Poppy's coming. You're coming in as well? <laughs> You're not so sure. Oh, darn it. Wow, look at the controls on this. She wants to come in, I think. I think come on then, up you go. It's a bit high for her. Oh, she's done it. Is it? Yeah, the driver's seat. There's some view out there. Oh, or not. What do you reckon, Pops? Not sure, are you? <laughs> That's where the thinking. coal comes from. <laughs> <laughs> got a hatch up there, it's got a sunroof. Yep. Yeah. Comfortable chair. What more could you table ask for? Over there. Museum funded by the McGeorge Community Fund. Okay, is it in there? Let's have a look. They do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> GPO uniform items. All oh, right. Victorian letter balance. Yeah. I was just looking at the little uh, bicycle lamp there. Oh, yeah. 
I was saying, I never really realised that. It said tail lamps. It said when simple trains were used to connect together railway stock, accidents involving trains parting due to chain failure were not uncommon. Tail lamp on the rear of the last vehicle on the train <laughs> indicated indicated to staff that staff that the train was complete. So that's why they <laughs> had a tail lamp. Early timetable there. Peterborough, Overton, and then through to Northampton. Fascinating maps. No maps, pictures here. Different ones. I'm in the former waiting room. Yeah. yeah. That's the one that's here, isn't it? Yeah. It's at Barnwell originally. Yeah. Very unusual looking loco here. Not even sure what it is. I think it possibly some name like that it looks like well it looks like it's German, but all this complicated gear on it. Oh. Hmm. Quick look in the waiting room. Yeah, that's where we're thinking of going, wouldn't it, Pops? Yeah. Very nice. Get your tickets here. Hmm. And timetables. And Leicester. 1902 timetable. The staff out into Yarmouth, 1966. Not sure what's lurking in that shed there. Yeah, so all sorts of different engines here. Pickford's lorry over there. It's in the cows in the car park. There's a wedding in the church. Yeah, oh yeah. Hot exhaust. We look like men in black here, don't we? Oh no. <laughs> Off we go. Going back to peace for a minute. This is a tracked test vehicle 31, the hover train, the future transport vision for the United Kingdom, King's Cross to Edinburgh in 90 minutes. And was it doing it doing its test runs? Go to Erith. Now quite amazing. Final test run of the RTV that reached 107 miles an hour. What an amazing thing that was. Yeah. 
think we tried to have lunch there once and it wasn't open. Yeah. That's Peterborough. And that goes through to Peterborough Cathedral. We're going to have a quick look yeah. over there. Amazing building. Still amazed how they built these buildings all those years ago. Yeah, that's fantastic, isn't it? So we come through the Norman Gate then. Yeah. That's it, Norman Gate, Beckett Chapel and Cafe and Albert Gate House, Prior's Gate. King, rows of kings and apostles, local saints and abbots. Sadly, in, in 1923, a statue of St. Peter lost its keys. It's oh. careless, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, look up there. Let's see if we can zoom in. Completed in 1238. That was completed in 1238? Yeah. Wow. It's just amazing, isn't it? There's a big book to read here before you get in. That's quite amazing, isn't it? Yes, giant book. Yeah. <laughs> True, isn't it? 1118, this began construction. The Black Death in 13... Oh, 1150, New Market, surrounding streets. Black Death in 1349, 1536, wife... Ke uh, Catherine of Aragon, first wife of Henry VIII, is buried in the church. Henry VIII creates a new bishop in the cathedral, and the church becomes a cathedral. Mary, Queen of Scots, is buried here. Peter was taken by Oliver Cromwell, 1643, civil war. Damage is gradually repaired. Blimey, it took them until the 1800s to repair it. Mm. Air raids on the city caused damage, but the cathedral is saved by fire watchers. Fire in the south transept and today still offers daily worship and prayer. Can't really take all of this in. But yeah, wow. I mean, even the front gate. Well, it's difficult to take all this in, but did you say they it's a unique wooden ceiling here. Yeah, it's unique in England. Completed in 1250. And the inscription on the cross there. Yeah, is in Latin, obviously there. It says, yeah. the cross stands whilst the world turns. The open cathedral, isn't it? It feels quite modern. Mm. Strange, really, isn't it? Quite, um, it's, not, it's not decorated. It's not huge numbers of stained glass windows. Because no, you think of St Albans with all the like the paintings on the pillars they found. Yeah. That stained glass window at the back yeah. dates from the 19th century. Okay. So there was a fire, there. wasn't there? Yeah, amazing font here. The stained glass window at the back there. There's the choir. No, oh, Pops, you are allowed in here, aren't you? You've got to be quiet, though, Pops. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, good grief. These are the 19th century windows. So these columns here, these uh, date from the 13th century, after the parliamentarian troops destroyed the stalls in 1643, surviving parts were worked into new stalls with a more classic design. So this is about the tower. 
12th century, the tower was higher than it is now, but lowered in 1370 because of an instability. Problems com continued, and by 1882, there were cracks in the pillars wide enough for a man to get through, eventually had to be dismantled and rebuilt. In 790, oh, 597, Pope Gregory the Great sent a group of monks led by Augustine to bring the Christian faith to the Anglo-Saxons. This marked the beginning of the Church of England. Just looking up there, that's the tower. Up into there. The monks of Peter had to keep track of time in order to observe the daily services within the rule of St. Benedict. Did this with the help of sun, sun dials and ringing bells. Uh, engineer, uh, timekeeping developed with the early clock. This has no face but strikes every half hour so the monks knew when to pray. <laughs> Dates from 1450 and early, uh, earliest parts of the mechanism are painted black. In 1687, a local clockmaker added a more accurate pendulum and other parts painted green, installed on top of the frame with a three metre pendulum. Clock was in use in the bell tower until 1950 when it was replaced by an electronic device. Restored and relocated here in 1984, and it still works. It's about the tomb of Catherine Aragon. She was raised from birth to be queen born in 1485, daughter of King Ferdinand of Aragon and Queen Isabella of Castile, two of the most powerful monarchs in Europe. At age 16, she was married to Arthur, Prince of Wales. When Arthur died, Catherine faced an uncertain future. She later married Arthur's younger brother when he became King Henry VIII in 1509. It's a little bit about her funeral here, or her burial, when Henry Henry divorced Catherine, she was sent away and came to, came to Kimbolton Manor. Lived under house arrest for two years until her death in 1536, sustained by strength of will and intense religious devotion. Catherine's tomb, it always says that Henry VIII refused to allow Catherine's state funeral, saying it was too expensive. She was buried in a grand ceremony at Peterborough Abbey, conducted by four bishops and six abbots attended by noble mourners and lit by a thousand candles. Her tomb was destroyed in 1643 during the Civil War, but the body was undisturbed. In 1493, a Daily Mail, invited, Daily Mail newspaper invited readers named Catherine each to subscribe a penny, which paid for the marble slab that you see here now. So that's that over there, right there. then? These huge textile panels are created by artist Jackie Parkinson. It took three years millions of stitches and miles of thread. It threads through the Revelation. Visited many cathedrals, which said 16, uh, 2016 and 2018, reimagines re the seven days of creation. So that's the apple and the snake. Two trees, two keepers. Stone here. So this dates from says it's a carving dates from around 800 AD. It shows Jesus, Mary and the Apostles. It's called the Hedda Stone, H-E-D-D-A, Stone. Oh. Look at the marble behind there. I know. See the ceiling a bit better here. Windows are amazing. No, that's right, because you've got the uh, universe and God said there, there'd be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night. And it was so. God made two great lights. The greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. And you've got the panel six. <laughs> it's about the great flood. Very nice. The last panel at the back there says, God rested and it was all good. Happy with that? This is quite stunning. Put the marble on it. And we've got the uh, tomb of Mary, Queen of Scots here as well. So. Yeah, it's a former burial place of Mary, Queen of Scots. Okay. The 
the chapel of St Oswald, King of Northumbria. Fire here as well. <laughs> you can feel the heat from it. You can feel the heat coming off that. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. Right, resorted to having to use the uh, Samsung here. The batteries on the Sony Vector. <laughs> but yeah, this is an absolutely stunning cathedral. It, is, it really yeah. is. If you're in, uh, anywhere near Peterborough, you really need to come and have a look at this. It's different from a lot of the cathedrals we've seen mm, and, it lets and, it, and it lets dogs in as well so yeah so definitely come and have a look um, so that's the end of this video thanks for watching if you've enjoyed it give us a thumbs up and we'll catch up with you in the next one which is the start which will be the start, start of our of scottish a... tour probably yeah yep. okay we're off home now yeah so we'll yeah. see you soon bye then bye then <laughs>